The things I'm gonna cover in this video are what is lossless scaling, tips before using it, minimum FPS needed, frame generation in any game, upscaling in any game, and settings for both. And yes, I am running the game at 200 FPS. It's an app that you can get in Steam. It simulates upscaling and frame generation for games, videos, and movies. It's very cheap and often gets a discount. And as you can see, it updates really fast as well. It's recommended that you run Lossless as administrator. So you come here, settings, and right here, start as administrator. It's also extremely important that your graphics card is not stressed when using the program. You need to keep an eye on it or you will drop frames. Personally, I like to use MSI Afterburner to keep track of it, but you can use Task Manager, NVIDIA Overlay or even Steam Overlay like I said in this video. Make sure your GPU is at maximum 85% usage when playing without the app. Do not use full screen mode. You need to set it windowed or window full screen. You need to lock your FPS at a comfortable value. Do not let your FPS go wild. You need it stable for the program to work. And as always, optimize your game so it can run better. I have this guide here where I double my FPS if you're interested. The more fake frames you generate, the higher your input lag will be. So I wouldn't recommend going more than 3 times in lossless scaling. I know a lot of people cannot afford powerful computers, me neither, so I'm going to simulate your FPS so you'll see how well the program will do. To simulate it, I'm going to use Riva Turner where I can put my frame rate limit. So let's start with 70. There. Is now locked at 70. Now that it's locked in 70, I'm going to go and activate the program. I'm going to tell about the settings later, for now it's just a demonstration. So, one fake frame being generated here, meaning it will double my FPS. So let's see. I'm gonna use my hotkey to scale it. And the FPS should appear at the top left. Now I am with 110, 120 frames. Depends where I'm looking. It feels really smooth. And I have no input lag. I can move around very fine. And I'm not noticing artifacts or anything. Feels very real. Of course, the worse your game looks, the worse the fake frames will be as well. But my lowest settings in this game is fine. Even when I move fast like this, I, I don't get any artifacts. There are some artifacts in my MSI overlay, but that's super expected because it's an outside app. Oh, and it's also... The overlays are, are okay. Right here. They're, they're fine. Just the mutations wanna, are a bit weird. Right now, I'm running the game at 60 FPS and I'm getting 100... 110, 120. Basically, the higher your frames are, the real ones, the less lag you will feel. You're gonna see when I get you the lowest FPS values. Now we are running 45 FPS, which is normally the FPS I use for this game. It's not 60, it's not 30, it's just midway. It's my favorite. So let's scale it. Now I am 90 frames. Still super smooth, no artifacts, getting fine. When I move, it's okay as well. When I attack, it's following my commands. No lack. You will only notice it, the artifacts or something in case you have a very good monitor. I have a 1080, so I have less pixels to render and stuff. But I'm going to talk about it in the flow scale setting, which is very important for this type of stuff. Now we're going to go to 30 FPS. 
Let's see. It's super laggy right now. Let's press the scale button. Now we are 60. It's still running very fine, very smooth. I can turn it off. Now it's super laggy. I can turn it on. Now it's smooth. I get a bit more artifacts, but that's because my game is also at very low settings. I'm just simulating 30 FPS, which is something I usually don't get. But I know a lot of you get, so yeah, maybe this app will save your life. It's really not recommended if you cannot get at least 30 frames in the game. So when I turn on the scaler, let's see what happens. It gets smoother, that's for sure. But I do feel a bit of a movement lag, J just a little bit. Very minimal. I could play. It's totally playable. But since I only have 25 FPS, the app has less samples to make good frames for me. So, well, the more I move here, the worse the image becomes. But again, it's totally playable. In case you feel lost about some setting, you can just hover your mouse on it and it will tell you an explanation. But I'll try to simplify. In the frame generation tab right here, the type always the last one. So 3.1 is what we have for the mode. Fixed is the most stable one. You can choose if you want to double or triple your FPS. Anything more than that, I really don't recommend, especially in the IO, where we have a lot of grass. But for the adaptive, you can set the FPS value you want to achieve, and the program will do everything it can to get you there. Even if it means getting more and more fake frames. So like, let's say I want 180 frames. Oh wow, this is gonna break my game. Scale. It made um, 45 frames become 180, but as expected, it's using way more fake frames. So when I get even lower FPS, it uses even more fake frames. I don't really recommend this method unless you're like kind of crazy like me, trying to get 2000 FPS in this game. For the flow scale, the higher this is, the more small details your fake frames will have. In some cases, setting this to low will get you some ghosting, as you can see in this crosshair, but will also give you more performance, since the program is not working too hard. It also has to do with our monitor resolution, so since I have a 1080, I can set it around 85 to 100 and it will feel okay. If you have a Quad HD or a 4K, you can set it even lower. You just need to experiment it. And if your PC is struggling to make the frames or so, you can set up the performance button. It will sacrifice a little bit of the quality, but it will go easier on your PC. Here in the capture, I always use the Windows one. It's the most updated, so it works really well. And also because I'm recording, so it shows easier in my recording app. If you feel anything bad, you can try to switch to DX. It will also work. The keyword target is about latency. If you leave at zero, you get the lowest latency possible, but you might get a few stutters while playing. One is the balanced version, is the one I use. And two, it's only for special cases where the capture is unstable, I never saw someone using it. Here in the cursor is if you are getting any issue with your cursor, like if you want it to keep in the screen, if you have a weird speed in your cursor or, well, it's simple. The cropping pot we're gonna skip for now and let's go straight to rendering. Rendering also deals with latency, off having the lowest latency of them all but it can cause screen issues at certain moments. Default is the one I use, it's the balanced version. 
VSync will automatically cap your fake frames to the monitor refresh rate. I really don't recommend it. Default is to the best. For the max frame latency, it is said that 2, 3, and 10 are the best values. 10 being the lowest latency, but uses extra VRAM. I usually set it to 3, which is the medium value between them. It feels great and doesn't break my game. There are some other settings here, such as ATR support, G-Sync support, and show FPS, but that's personal. That's on you. Here in the GPU and the display, you will set what GPU you want to use. This is more common if there's people that have two GPUs, such as an integrated one coming from the processor and one dedicated, which is a physical one installed in your motherboard. Using two GPUs in this app make a miracle, but I only have one, so I cannot talk much about it. If you do have two GPUs, I really recommend searching Duo GPU in the YouTube or Google. It's super worth it in this app. It can reduce a lot of the latency and produce better frames. And for the multi-display mode, is if you have more monitors. I have two, but I usually let it off. I don't hop between monitors that much. But if you need, just turn it on. Also, if you notice it ghosting while playing, that's because either the flow scale is too low, the multiplier is too high, or your base FPS is too low. If you are getting laggy frames or the frames did not improve at all, that's because your GPU or the CPU is stressed. You either need to optimize the game a bit more or lower the settings in both the application and the game. If you don't like fake frames, don't have DLSS or FSR and still want more FPS, you can use the program to render your game at a lower resolution and then upscale it for you. It's totally customizable, so you can set your sharpness level and which upscaler do you want. There's a lot for you to choose. The best ones are LS1 and FSR. The others are also good, but just two here are my favorite. We're gonna go to the settings and we're gonna reduce our game. Let's see. This one. Apply. All right, we are very small now. And let's see if everything is correct. LS1, sharpness, we're gonna leave at a 2. Mode, we're gonna leave it. Automatic, I don't mind, and we're gonna go to full screen. Go to the game, press my hotkey, and there we go, we are full screen. Okay, I'm getting 73, 74 frames here in the full HD. Now let's try to render the game at a lower resolution, such as this one. Let's see, from 72, we went to 90. That's a lot. Now, let's try to scale it. And we are now with 82 frames. It sacrificed a little bit of the frames, but that's expected. But yeah, now I'm playing in a smaller resolution, but it's in full screen. Because it upscaled for me. And if I find it too blurry or something, I can turn on the sharpness to a higher value. Like this. Let's see. Yeah, works. Really works. There's also the performance mode, if you need. Back to this. The crop input is to ignore edges when scaling, but I never use it. Here, you can choose the type of upscaler do you want, these two being the best options. Then you can set your sharpness level to your liking. Here, the performance mode if you need a little bit more performance. Here in the mode, leave it at auto and here you can, you can put full screen, that's what I usually do. You should go for 
it is possible to upscale the game and also use frame generation at the same time but to use it i'm gonna lock my fps well that was it was just a little showcase of the app i really like this app i recommend it to a lot of people but again follow the tips i said to you if your computer is not powerful enough to at least have 30 stable frames i don't recommend you getting it unless you want to use in other games where you have a better fps but for the io 30 would be minimum hope you enjoyed till next time